The story begins with a priest known as the highest priest, who notices a pot of water turning red, signaling that the time for the next emperor of the gods has arrived. He summons Lord Habak, the god of the sea and the candidate to become the emperor of gods. Lord Habak is busy posing for a painter who is creating a portrait of him. During their meeting, the priest informs him that Habak must perform a ritual to be chosen as the emperor. He must go to the world of humans and retrieve three sacred stones. The priest provides him with a map and also mentions the gods of land and sky from whom he would gather the stones. Habak brings his servant, Namsuri, with him, as he has experience of living in the human world before. In the human world, we see a lady, Yun Soe, in her clinic attending to a patient named Mr. Ma. She is a psychiatrist who runs a medical health clinic. While Soe is listening to him, Mr. Ma becomes angry and spills coffee on her gown. He thinks that Soe doesn't believe him about the end of the world, and his urgency to meet Obama to save the world. Meanwhile, Soe's assistant, Sang Yu, arrives and comforts the patient. He knows how to handle this delusional patient and escorts him away. Soa then packs her gown in a bag and heads to a place near the lake. There, she retrieves her buried diamond ring and begins to admire it. While sitting on a bench, when she is gazing at the sky, Habak falls from above and lands on her. It causes her to lose consciousness. Finding himself naked, Habak grabs Soe's gown from her bag and puts it on. He then taps her forehead to wake her before leaving her. Upon awakening, Soe discovers her gown and diamond ring missing from her bag and cries out loudly, accusing someone of theft. Hearing her cries, Habak becomes angered at being labeled a thief, but Namsuri arrives at the scene wearing Habak's clothes. Habak asks him to exchange dresses. Afterward, they attempted to find the map provided by the highest priest, but they couldn't find it anywhere. Additionally, Habak finds that his powers are ineffective in the human world. Without any direction or means to return to their world, they're left stranded. Habak tries to reawaken his powers, but fails. Meanwhile, Soe arrives at the scene. Habak, wanting to repay her kindness, asks what she desires. Soe requests money, but Habak doesn't even know what money is. He explains that he is the god of water and is destined to become the emperor of gods. Soe perceives him as another patient with grandiose delusions. When she tries to leave, ignoring him, Habak intervenes and takes hold of her hand. At that moment, Sangyu arrives and rescues Soe. Habak continues, claiming that she is his servant and must obey him. Sangyu hands him a card for their clinic and leaves with Soe. The following day, Soe goes to the bank to request an extension on her loan. However, since she has been consistently late with her interest payments, the banker informs her that they can only extend her loan at a higher interest rate. Curiously, the banker is offering another person, Mr. Shin, a very low interest rate. Soe confronts the banker about this discrepancy. Mr. Shin intervenes, urging the banker to assist Soe first. Meanwhile, Habak and Namsuri arrive at a location where the Divine Gate is situated in the human world. Coincidentally, Soe also comes there as the gate is located on her land. Although she sees it merely as a pile of stones, desperate to resolve her financial issues, she is considering selling that land. Habak attempts to impress her and make her his servant by showing off his charismatic personality. But Soe remains indifferent, she accidentally hits Namsuri with her car. So, she is forced to take both of them with her. While driving through the forest, the car runs out of gas. Namsuri goes to fetch some fuel for the car. As Soe and Habak walk in the woods, a boar starts to follow them. They hide in the trunk of the car, until Namsuri returns. Later that night, annoyed with both of them, Soe decides to leave them behind and go home. Habak, once again, tries to impress her, and to do this, he kisses her. But still, it doesn't change the mind of Soe, so she leaves them behind without saying anything. In the Divine's realm, the highest priest uses his water pot to create an image of Soe. He predicts that this woman will die soon, even before Habak returns and ascends to his throne. In the human world, Habak and Namsuri watch a skateboarding contest. Namsuri suggests that Habak enter the competition to earn money for food. Habak takes it as a challenge and agrees to it. He quickly learns all the skateboarding tricks by observing them. He then displays his skateboarding skills like he has been doing this since his childhood. Meanwhile, Soe arrives and is amazed by Havoc's abilities. However, the event organizer refuses to award the prize money, alleging that Havoc seems to be a professional skateboarder who is ineligible for the competition. On the other hand, Havoc goes behind Soe while she is running from him. She dodges him and succeeds in hiding from him. While sitting near a lake, she remembers a memory of her being drowned in the water. 
The following day, Habak and Namsuri go to Soe's mental clinic by following the address on her business card. Upon arrival, they witness Soe assisting an elderly man to cross the road. Mr. Shin is also present in his car at the signal, observing her actions and appearing impressed. Habak once again demands Soe to obey him as a servant because he is a god. However, Soe pulls Namsuri aside and advises him to seek proper mental health care for his master and bring him back home instead of wandering the streets. Namsuri explains they have nowhere to go and no food to eat. Despite this, Soe is stressed by their presence and instructs them to seek help from a community center, also requesting them not to follow her again. In response, they both depart from her, saying that they will not come after her again. While in the park, Habak senses that someone is following them. It turns out to be Jujalan, a voracious deity from the world of gods. Jujalan kisses Habak to confirm that his powers have vanished, then taunts him and flees. Later, while Habak and Namsuri are on the train, Habak notices a video on the phone of a girl nearby. In the video, he sees Lady Mora from the World of Gods and is surprised. He follows the girl to learn more, but unknowingly exits the train, leaving Namsuri behind. As a result, they become separated. There, Habak encounters Mr. Ma, who has escaped from Soe's mental care hospital on the opposite side. Mr. Ma recognizes Habak, and they both head to the bank of the lake bringing plenty of food with them. Meanwhile, Sangyu calls Soe and informs her that Mr. Ma has escaped from their hospital and posted a picture claiming to have met a god. When Soe sees the picture, it turns out to be Havoc with him. She rushes to the bank of the lake, where they are seated. Initially, she sits nearby, hiding from them to overhear their conversation. Mr. Ma tells Havoc that he failed to contact Obama, who he believes is the only person capable of saving the world. Havoc counters, stating that Obama cannot save the world, and that Mr. Ma is mistaken as no one has appointed him for this task from the world of gods. Disheartened by Havoc's response, Mr. Ma becomes very dejected, as Havoc is his last hope for understanding his mission in life. Feeling unheard, he walks towards the water, intending to end his life. Then, Soe arrives there and attempts to stop Mr. Ma, but he refuses to listen. Soe herself is traumatized by the sight of the water, recalling a painful memory from her past. She remembers standing on a bridge, calling out for her father, but receiving no response. Feeling abandoned, she jumped into the water, crying for help, but no one came to her aid. Eventually, she managed to save herself and emerged from the river. Havoc stands there observing the scene as Mr. Ma jumps into the water. Soe attempts to overcome her fear of water and jumps in after him, but Havoc stops her from doing this and jumps in himself to save Mr. Ma. After rescuing Mr. Ma from the water, Soe expresses her gratitude by hugging Havoc. The next morning, when Soe wakes up, her ears are plugged. She has been hearing voices coming from objects like plants and flowers. It seems as though they are criticizing her for not aiding people in need, such as Havoc and Namsuri. Her sense of guilt is urging her to go and help Havoc. So, she returns to Havoc and offers her assistance if needed though she still doesn't believe that he is a god. At night, Soe attends her university reunion, where she encounters Mr. Shin, who again appears impressed by her. Among the attendees is an old classmate of Soe's named Shin Jaya, who comes across as a bully. Shin Jaya teases Soe using a nickname from their school days, and then proceeds to discuss Soe's father, who used to take in orphans from the streets and care for them in his home. He eventually left for charity work in another country but never returned, leading Shin Jaya to claim that he sacrificed his family for the greater good, which offends Soe. She begins to walk away, stopping herself from striking Shin Jaya. However, Shin Jaya follows her and tears her dress. Soe gets angry again but controls herself. She calls Jaya an attention seeker and advises her to step away from the world of social media. Outside, Shin Jaya continues to follow Soe, but Havoc intervenes and saves Soe from her. He gives his coat to Soe to wear, and takes her away in a taxi. As they walk on a trail, Havoc shares more about his world with Soe. They then sit in front of the large screen to watch the commercial featuring Mora again. When Mora appears once more in the commercial, Soe tells Havoc that she is an actress named Heyara here. In the morning, Soe takes Havoc to the hotel where Mora is present. However, Mora refuses to recognize him, and even slaps him. Soe intervenes and reprimands Mora for her behavior before taking Havoc away. After they leave, Mora calls another god named Birium and informs him that Havoc is in the human world, 
signaling that the time to select the emperor has arrived. They both have decided not to give their sacred stones to Havoc for some hidden reason. Meanwhile, Soei takes Havoc to her friend Yongmi, a better psychiatrist than her. After meeting her friend, Havoc is mad at Soei and says that she doesn't believe him, so he decides to leave Soei alone and do his work without her. However, as Soei comes to the stairs of the building, a man attacks her from behind and takes her to the roof, attempting to throw her off the building. Soei struggles and defends herself, while Namsuri witnesses the scene from below and calls Havoc to inform him. Initially confused by Namsuri's message, Havoc realizes the situation when he sees Soei across the glass window. She is falling down and crying for help. Havoc is so stunned by this scene that his phone drops from his hand. He rushes to her aid, breaking through the glass window, and then jumps from the building to save her. He has strong feelings for Soei that made him jump after her. Suddenly, a circle of water forms around him as his powers return. As they fall, he catches Soei and lands safely on the ground. Soei is stunned and gazes at him in amazement, as Havoc reveals that he has spoken the truth about being a god. At night, Soei takes Namsuri and Havoc to her home, where they begin to live together. Over time, Soei starts to believe that Havoc is indeed a god. The next day, while Namsuri and Havoc are conversing, Mora overhears them and learns that Havoc has lost his powers. Realizing this, when Havoc approaches Mora to retrieve the sacred stones, she refuses, stating that she cannot allow a powerless god to become our king. Havoc tries to persuade Mora, assuring her that his loss of power is only temporary and that he will regain it soon. However, Mora remains steadfast in her decision. Meanwhile, Mr. Shin expresses interest in Soei's land for building a resort, and he purchases it from her at seven times its value. Delighted with the deal, Soei shares the news with Sang Yu and goes to celebrate with him. Meanwhile, Havoc begins learning the Korean language, because Mora has set a condition for him to report all negative comments on her profile in exchange for the sacred stones. However, this condition is merely an excuse to get rid of Havoc temporarily. That night, Soe returns home late, and Havoc waits for her outside on the street. Upon her arrival, he demonstrates that he has learned to read and write Korean. He writes both words, Yun Soa and Havoc, on the wall. The following day, Havoc feels stressed by Mora's tactics of withholding the stones, so he suggests going for a drive to relax. Soei agrees and takes Havoc and Namsuri in her car. They visit the beach, and later lie down in a calm and beautiful farm field. While there, Soei expresses her desire for a peaceful place akin to an ocean with warm waters where she can swim alone. Also, Havoc comes there in her imagination, supporting her and ensuring she doesn't feel lonely. While lying in the farm fields, Havoc says sorry to Soei, but she can't understand why he is saying sorry to her. Actually, Havoc has seen a man failing the brakes of Soei's car, but he is not going to tell Soei this, because he wants to endanger her life and recover his powers while saving her. When they are going back, Havoc suddenly arrives in the driver's seat of the car and says that he will drive this time. He starts driving fast and fast, but the brakes are not working. Soei is very scared at the moment. Havoc takes the car into an underpass, breaking the stop signs. But two oil trucks are on the other side of the tunnel. They don't have any other way except to jump from the moving car. Havoc opens the sunroof and goes on the vehicle's roof. He gives his hand to Soei and pulls her out of it. Meanwhile, Namsuri is keeping the steering. Namsuri and Havoc are immortals, so they will not die. But Soei is mortal, so their main motto is to save her. At that very moment, while jumping from the car, Havoc's powers return, and he forms a water circle around Soei and himself. In this way, they are saved from crashing with the car into an oil truck. Namsuri crashes the car with trucks, and returns back with all the suit on his face and clothes. Meanwhile, Havoc and Soei are saved, and Havoc has carried Soei in his hands. After that, Havoc tells them he has seen the man who failed the brakes. They report that man, and police arrest him. In the investigations, that man tells his story to the police. He crashed his car accidentally into the car of Soei a few days back, and he had to pay for the damage, but this affected his life financially. So, he went to kill Soei in his rage. He threw her from the building, but she remained unharmed. He believes that Soei is not human and that the man with him, Havoc, is not human. He has tried many times to harm them, but they always come back safe. At night, Havoc makes delicious food for the three of them, and they enjoy a candle dinner on the rooftop of Soei's house. The next morning, Havoc takes Namsuri and Soei with him to meet Lord Biriam, but Soei faints when she sees him. Actually, 
Hyperium is her old university friend who gave her a diamond ring, she can't believe that he can be a god. Virium also declines to give the sacred stone to Havoc, he says that as Havoc is powerless now, he doesn't deserve to be the king. He also sets a condition that he will give him the sacred stone if Mora gives him her sacred stone first. At this, Havoc carries the fainted Soe at his back and leaves. Havoc and Namsuri then go to Mora to take her sacred stone, but she again declines, saying that she will only give him the stone if Biriam gives him first. Actually, both are just trying to dodge Havoc and want to pass some time. The next day, when Soe emerges from her clinic, Biriam arrives and forcefully takes Soe with him in his car. Havoc observes this from behind and runs after the car, but Biriam is very fast. Biriam carries her to a bridge, where he gives her a fluid and asks her to somehow make Havoc drink it. In return, he promises to make her the richest person in the world. However, Soe declines his offer and throws the fluid onto the ground. Meanwhile, Havoc and Namsuri arrive with Mora in her car. Havoc signals Mora to come towards him, but Biriam uses his powers to pull her back. He then uses his powers to start raining on Soe and breaks the bridge around her, creating a circle. He says that he wants to see if Havoc's powers can really return to save this girl or not. Biriam is about to make Soe fall into the river, but then Havoc realizes something. He asks Biriam and Mora if they have lost their sacred stones. Upon this, Biriam reverses the clouds and the circle around Soe. Biriam and Mora are surprised at how Havoc knows their stones are lost. Mora begins to blame Biriam, accusing him of losing the stones and saying it was his idea to shift the blame onto each other. Meanwhile, Soe appears to be in deep shock. She approaches, slaps Biriam, and takes Mora's car to leave the place. Biriam attempts to discuss the matter of the stones with Havoc, but he refuses, stating that they will discuss it tomorrow. Havoc is also depressed by Soe's condition. In the night, Soe goes to her mother's grave. She pours out her heart, expressing that she has no one to confide in and mourning her father's absence. After spending some time there, she returns home. Havoc is waiting for her in the street. He promises to protect her in every circumstance, stating that it is his duty as a god. When Soe is at her clinic the following day, Mr. Shin comes there. Soe still needs to sign the contract papers for her land, which she has sold to Mr. Shin. So, Mr. Shin himself comes there to get her signed documents, but Soe has lost the documents in Biriam's car, so she takes more time for Mr. Shin. After that, Soe's friend calls her and asks her to come to her place. She wants her to meet some priest who can understand her condition better. When Soe reaches there with Havoc and Namsuri, she goes inside alone. The priest starts telling her that she has some evil powers in her house, and she has to get rid of them to turn her days. But then Havoc comes inside and sees that Jujalan has come there as a priest. Seeing him, Jujalan starts running from there. Havoc follows him, but Jujalan jumps from a tall building and vanishes, leaving ashes behind. After that, when Havoc, Soe, and Namsuri are going somewhere in the car, Havoc gives him the contract papers for her land, which she lost in Biriam's car. But the papers are torn into pieces. Havoc says that she can't sell that land because it is the property of God, and Havoc doesn't want this. Actually, the Divine Gate is on that land, and Havoc doesn't want anyone else to own that land. Soe becomes extremely angry at him for doing this. She gets out of the car and leaves. Havoc goes behind her to sympathize with her but fails. She calls Mr. Shin and asks him if she wants to meet him. So, she continues towards his place while walking across the road on the crosswalk. Meanwhile, a high-speed truck is coming her way. She has not seen it. Havoc calls her to step aside, but she doesn't listen. He runs towards her, but the truck is very fast. The truck reaches to her before him. He looks around anxiously upon arriving but fails to spot Soe. His fear intensifies until he finally spots Biriam carrying Soe along the side of the road. Havoc goes to them and asks Biriam what he is doing there. Then Biriam says that he is free for the day and has followed both of them since the morning to see their romantic relationship. Soe is still in her previous shock. She goes from there without saying anything. She goes straight to Mr. Shin and gives him the torn contract pieces, binding them with tape. But Mr. Shin tells her that he will send a new contract tomorrow. Mr. Shin also offers her the opportunity to work with him in his garden to empty the clutter in her mind. Soe agrees to work there, and also shares her feelings with him there. And then, at night, Mr. Shin leaves her home in his car. In the morning, Mr. Shin again calls Soe and tells her the documents are ready. He invites her to sign the papers and have dinner, 
Soe is looking very happy and excited on his phone call. Meanwhile, Habak sees her talking to someone on the phone with excitement. He asks who the guy is, but Soe becomes nervous and doesn't tell him. When Soe reaches her clinic, Sangyu tells her that some people have come earlier. They found some poop of a rare species of Korean leopard, so they want to do research there. Also, they said not to sell the place until the research is complete. However, Soe remains steadfast in her decision to sell the land. So she approaches Mr. Shin and signs the necessary documents. Meanwhile, Habak and Namsuri go to the land where the Divine Gate is located, accompanied by Mora. There, Habak discovers a rock with blood stains. Gods, however, do not bleed, and the area is purified of human traces, meaning that no human remnants should be present. This raises suspicion about the stone. As they begin their return journey, they spot Mr. Shin and Soe emerging from a hotel after dinner. This sight visibly hurts Habak. When Soe returns home, she doesn't find Habak waiting for her in the street as usual. Concerned, she goes upstairs and asks Habak why he isn't there. Habak informs her that he will not be staying there anymore, and will soon return to his land of water. Next, a group of low deities is seen having a meal together. Biriam and Mora arrive and apprehend Jujalan, with Mora taking him to Habak. Habak questions Jujalan about the bloodstained stone, as he has lived for a long time and knows stories from ancient times. Jujalan suggests that if the blood is human and found near the divine door where no human traces should exist, it implies that he is present, although no one has ever seen him before. While Habak and Mura discuss this mysterious figure, Mr. Shin appears and tries to be friendly with Habak, but Habak doesn't respond to Mr. Shin's attempts. Meanwhile, Soe arrives to meet Mr. Shin. As they converse, Habak approaches Mr. Shin and whispers in his ear that he has caught him. Upon hearing this, the color drains from Mr. Shin's face immediately. Habak then shows the human blood-stained stone to Mr. Shin, asking if it belongs to him. However, Mr. Shin remains silent in response. Meanwhile, Mora apologizes to Mr. Shin, explaining that they have mistaken him for someone else. However, doubts about Mr. Shin persist, as they suspect him to be the mysterious figure. The narrative then shifts back in time to shed light on him. He is revealed to be a being who is half god and half human, his father being a god and his mother a human. He is unique, and both worlds have rejected him. Habak suspects that Mr. Shin is the demigod being half-human and half-god. Next, we find Habak at Soe's clinic, ready to accompany her home. However, on their way, Soe suggests taking Habak to some interesting places. She decides to take him to an amusement park, where they explore haunted houses and enjoy various thrilling rides, including the swings. The following day, Mr. Shin visits Soe's clinic and confides in her, expressing his need for therapy. He opens up about his past, revealing that he never knew his mother and was treated like a monster by his father, who eventually cast him out of the house. He recounts how he was never wanted as a child. In truth, Mr. Shin's visit to the clinic is motivated by his desire to ascertain whether Soe is aware of his true identity. By sharing his story, he learns that Soe is unaware of his past. As he exits the clinic, a low deity is observed surveilling him and reporting back to Biriam. Subsequently, Biriam attempts to endanger Mr. Shin's life to test whether he possesses powers. However, Mora intervenes, preventing Biriam from carrying out this action. In doing so, she actually protects Biriam because harming a human in the human world would prohibit a god's entry into the realm of the gods. The next day, while Mr. Shin is in his garden, Havoc arrives. He is convinced that Mr. Shin is half-god. However, Havoc's purpose in visiting Mr. Shin is to inquire about the symbol on his chest which actually belongs to another god named Judong. Judong possesses the third sacred stone that Havoc requires. Due to Judong being inaccessible, Havoc questions Mr. Shin about the symbol, wondering if Mr. Shin has any involvement in Judong's disappearance or demise. Mr. Shin remains silent in response. Mora intervenes once again, preventing any potential argument from escalating into a fight. The following day, while Soe is examining the hidden map within her pen, Havoc notices his map of sacred stones on it. He swiftly moves towards her and retrieves the pen from her. It is then that he recalls the night when he descended from the sky, and Soe was holding the pen up towards the heavens. Somehow, the map of Havoc's sacred stones became concealed within her pen. Now that Havoc has found the map and located the sacred stones of Mora and Biriam, only Judong's sacred stone remains behind. Additionally, his time for returning home draws nearer with each passing day. Meanwhile, the emotional bond between Habak and Soe continues to deepen, and they express their love for each other. 
However, they are aware of the inherent barriers between them, being from different worlds, and realize they may never be destined to be together. The next day, Mr. Shin is seen sitting among some flower plants. As he attempts to touch the flowers, they wither and die. Chaya observes this from a distance, astonished by Mr. Shin's ability. During their interaction, she guesses that Mr. Shin possesses magic and uses it to affect the flowers. Suddenly, Mr. Shin hugs her from behind and performs an action that suppresses her childish behavior, leaving her noticeably subdued. After Jaya leaves, we see Jujalan with Mr. Shin, who has been mentoring him for centuries. Jujalan has been guiding Mr. Shin since the arrival of that demigod on Earth. Meanwhile, Havok and Soei are enjoying romantic moments together, engaging in activities such as cleaning the house, sharing smiles, dining together, and going for walks. Jujalan informs Mr. Shin that Soei is a divine servant and should be aligned with him, as Shin is half-human and Soei belongs to the human world. Later, Mr. Shin learns that the land Soei sold to him, which she now seeks back, is actually a sacred site containing the Divine Gate, a portal between the human and divine worlds. Havok now wants to get the land back from Mr. Shin. Also, Biriam expresses his frustration to Havok for allowing Soei to sell the land initially. Biriam thinks that Mr. Shin will make that land into a resort, and if the area becomes frequented by visitors, it will be challenging to maintain its function as a divine gate. At night, Soei meets Mr. Shin again to discuss reclaiming the land. However, Mr. Shin makes promises, leading her to believe that he will eventually return the land to her. Havok stands outside, observing Mr. Shin and Soei. When Mr. Shin approaches him, he bluntly states that he has no interest in Havok or his world. His sole focus is on winning Soei's heart at any cost. Later, Soei calls Havok and asks to meet him. However, Havok displays cold behavior towards her. Reluctantly, he agrees to meet her at the place where they first encountered each other. Havok tells Soei that they are not meant for each other and advises against taking false emotions seriously. With those words, he begins to walk away. However, Soei breaks down in tears, expressing her disappointment and feeling like a failure after meeting a god. Her words strike a chord in Havok's heart. Moved by her vulnerability, Havok returns to her, pulls her to hug her, and kisses her passionately. The following day, Soei visits Mr. Shin to discuss the land issue. Mr. Shin agrees to return her land and proposes a plan to waive the deal cancellation fees. He suggests that Soei can provide checkups for him and his workers, aiming to impress her. Although Mr. Shin intends to win Soei's favor, she is relieved that her clinic will benefit from the arrangement. Upon returning home, Soei finds Havok waiting for her in the street. They both acknowledge their imminent separation and decide to part on good terms. Soei suggests having a farewell treat before Havok's departure. However, Havok admits that he has no money for it. Soei proposes that he should earn some money for the treat. On the other side, two low deities attack Mr. Shin with their powers on Biriam's orders, causing him severe injuries and bleeding. Enraged, Mr. Shin attempts to retaliate, but Jujalan intervenes, preventing him from acting violently. Despite the severity of his wounds, Mr. Shin's injuries heal rapidly. He receives a call from Biriam, who takes responsibility for the attack. Furious, Mr. Shin rushes towards Biriam for revenge, but Jujalan stops him again, urging him to refrain from violence and teaching him the value of being a good person. Meanwhile, Havok works part-time jobs to earn money. With his money, he purchases a set of cups as a gift for Soei. He invites Soei to meet him at a cafeteria, where he presents her with the gift and proudly shares that he worked two part-time jobs that day. Soei expresses happiness upon receiving the gift from Havok. In the night, Mr. Shin remains deeply disturbed by Biriam's attack and seeks solace and alcohol at a bar. Despite his desire to avoid trouble, he finds himself harassed by other gods. When Soei calls to remind him of their appointment, Shin dismisses the call, claiming to be busy. However, as the night progresses, he becomes increasingly intoxicated and eventually arrives at the clinic for his appointment. Upon entering the clinic, Soei notices Shin's high fever and quickly attends to him, using cold water-soaked clothes to lower his temperature. As she moves to unbutton his shirt to administer treatment better, Shin suddenly rises and appears to overpower her. He seems to attack Soei, driven by the belief that someone is checking the symbol on his chest. In the midst of this tense moment, Habak arrives at the scene. Upon seeing Mr. Shin bending over Soei, assumes they are in a romantic situation and impulsively punches Mr. Shin without inquiring about the actual circumstances. He then turns to Soei, demanding an explanation. 
However, Soei is enraged by his childish behavior and refuses to clarify the situation. Later, Habak finds himself drowning his sorrows in a bar with Biriam, in his intoxicated state. He confesses his love for Soe and feels betrayed by her actions. Biriam, seizing the opportunity, records Habak's vulnerable state. Habak also encounters some thugs on the street, with Biriam capturing the incident on camera before intervening to save Habak. Eventually, Biriam drops off Habak at Soe's house, leaving him in her care. Biriam goes back to Mora and shows her the video of Habak under the effect of alcohol and fighting with goons. The next day, Habak asks Soe to tell him one wish to be fulfilled. Soe tells him a lot of wishes which are related basically to becoming richer, but Habak asks him to tell the real desire, and he knows that she doesn't wish to become rich deep inside. Then they spend some quality time with each other. They go grocery shopping and then prepare food together. On the other side, when Biriam is not present, Mora checks his phone. She sees another video of Habak under the influence of alcohol. He confesses that he loves Soe in that video. This makes Mora very angry. She quickly drives her car to Soe's house and takes Soe with her. Mora tells Soe the story of how Soe's family became divine servants. Centuries ago, Habak fell in love with a girl named N.A.K. Bin, who was going to be sacrificed by humans. She was also a human. She betrayed Habak in exchange for eternal life, causing a curse on Habak, but the queen heard the matter and decided to kill her. She removed the curse on Habak by shedding the blood of N.A.K. Bin, and also was going to kill her brother and nephew for her sins. But her brother apologized and swore to be the divine servants for their generations if they were forgiven. Mori tells this story and requests Soe not to hold Habak back. She asks her to make Habak back somehow so that history can't be repeated. When Soe returns to home, she behaves casually as if nothing has happened. She says to Habak that he didn't do anything when N.A.K. Bin was being killed. Even though he loved her, she asks Habak coldly to move out of her house. But she is doing all this on the ask of Mora. Deep inside, she is hurting herself a lot. In the morning, Habak gets ready and asks Namsuri to prepare for leaving home. They have breakfast with Soe, return their mobile phones, and bid farewell to her. After that, they leave her house. Soe is very upset and sad for them. Habak and Namsuri go to the Divine Gate and leave. Then, we saw Mr. Shin having a session at the Soe clinic. After the session, they both go to a restaurant for dinner. There, Shin offers her his friendship. Mora and Biriam also reach there and see Shin and Soe together there. Biriam is very angry at the scene, but Mora stops him from doing anything. After dinner, Soe and Shin are walking on the road when Soe sees a stuffed toy being sold. It remembers her the memory of Havoc. Shin sees that Soe is interested in the toy, so he buys it for her. After reaching home, she keeps the toy in front of her and enjoys a coffee in the cup that Habak brought for her. She reads the book that Habak read during his last days of stay there. She is missing Habak a lot. The next morning, she feels sad and exhausted. Then she remembers Habak's memories, which make her strong and resolute. On the other side, Mora reaches Shin and asks her to take good care of Soe. She actually wants Soe to forget Habak, so she asks Shin to get close to Soe and make her his. The next day, the landowners came to the clinic to empty the place of the clinic for not paying the rent. Soe tries to tell them that she will pay the deposit more than the past ones, but they don't listen to her. Meanwhile, Soe's patient, Mr. Ma, reaches there and starts the fight with landowners. As a result, Mr. Ma and Sang Yu end up in jail. We see Soe trying to convince a police officer for the bail of her patient and assistant, but she has to get help from Shin in this matter. After the release of Mr. Ma and Sang Yu, Shin offers her to drive her home, but she insists on going on herself, so he lets her go. Shin follows her to make sure that she reaches home safely. Meanwhile, he calls her and asks her if he should buy the whole building of her clinic to get her out of this trouble. As Soe arrives at the street of her home, she is taken aback by a surprising sight. She is so shocked that she doesn't respond to Mr. Shin's question, and her phone slips from her grasp. To her amazement, she sees Havoc standing there, waiting for her. Overwhelmed with emotion, Soe rushes towards him and embraces him tightly, tears streaming down her face. Havoc retrieves Soe's phone and leads her inside their home, while Mr. Shin watches them from behind the wall. The next morning, Namsuri informs Soe that they have returned for another mission, to uncover the purpose of hiding the sacred stones in the human world. When Soe questions Havoc about this, he embraces her from behind and reveals that he has returned for her. In the world of gods, Havoc came to know that Soe missed him, 
prompting him to come back to bid her a proper farewell this time. In the morning, Soe requests Havoc to make her wealthy this time, believing they might possess some magical wand to fulfill her wish. However, Havoc admits that he still lacks his powers. He has returned without his abilities, as instructed by the highest priest, to fulfill their mission. Nonetheless, he is excited about one thing. He and Namsuri have managed to obtain their documents. Havoc proudly displays his license card, allowing him to drive legally, while Namsuri presents his identity card, enabling him to seek employment in the human world. Meanwhile, Jujalan approaches Mr. Shin, who appears depressed and seeks advice. Jujalan encourages Mr. Shin to reveal his true self to Soe as a means to win her affection. He suggests that if Mr. Shin still fails to impress her after telling her about his true self, it may indicate that they are not meant for each other. The following day, Jujalan encounters Havok and Namsuri together in the park. He attempts to kiss Havok to lift the curse inflicted upon him due to their last kiss. However, Havok declines, causing an awkward situation, especially with Soe present. Jujalan realizes that Havok is still devoid of his powers, and informs Mr. Shin of this development, suggesting that Mr. Shin exploit this weakness to win Soe's affections. Meanwhile, Mora arrives at the scene prompting Jujalan to hastily depart. Mora offers her support to Mr. Shin in his pursuit of Soe, even suggesting that he should take her by force if Havoc comes his way. As Mora and Mr. Shin converse, Biriam arrives and asks Mora to go with him. As she departs with Biriam, she stumbles, but Mr. Shin intervenes to prevent her from falling. Biriam reacts aggressively, punching Mr. Shin because he touched Mora. Then Biriam takes Mora with him. Soe arranges to meet Mr. Shin the next day, but Biriam interrupts their encounter. He warns Mr. Shin to stay away from Soe, and insists that Soe should avoid meeting anyone without knowing their true identity. Biriam forcibly pulls Soe towards himself, prompting Mr. Shin to intervene. However, Biriam quickly seizes Mr. Shin and teleports them both to an abandoned location. Biriam's assistant, Jugion, arrives and contacts Mora to inform her of the situation. Meanwhile, at the hotel, Soe calls Havok to inform him that Biriam has taken Mr. Shin somewhere. In the abandoned location, Biriam and Mr. Shin engage in a confrontation. Despite Mr. Shin's attempts to avoid conflict, Biriam seems driven by an old revenge. Biriam employs his powers against Mr. Shin, but when Mr. Shin retaliates by using his powers, Jugion intervenes, sustaining severe injuries in the process. Havok and Mora were sitting together when they heard about the confrontation between Biriam and Shin, so they both come to that abandoned place by the powers of Mora. They see Jugion on the ground and Biriam fighting with Shin. Havok stops them from fighting. Biriam goes from that place, and Havok takes Jugion to Mora's house. Havok goes back to Soe's house, and they both have an argument about Shin there. The next day, Havok goes to meet Biriam. There, we find out that Biriam has more anger against Shin because he killed Biriam's assistant back when Shin was a boy. The scene shifts to Soe, who is bringing some groceries back to her home at night. Then Jujialian comes from behind her and kidnaps her. Havok comes out of the house and sees that vegetables are spread on the street, and Soe's phone is also on the road. So, something bad has happened with Soe. Biriam has taken Soe to Shin, whose condition is terrible. He is feeling very depressed and hateful about himself. He needs therapy, especially from Soe. Soe calls Havok and tells him that she is safe and will be home back soon. She gives therapy to Shin and motivates him to focus on his good deeds instead of bad ones. Meanwhile, Havok comes there and takes her back with him. The next day, when Havok comes to the clinic of Soe, Shin is already present there waiting for Soe. They have an argument there. Shin believes that he is a perfect fit for Soe because he is financially in a good position and also when Havok goes out from the human world, Shin will be available for her. Meanwhile, Soe reaches there, but Havok doesn't let Shin to meet with Soe. He gives the keys to the clinic so that Shin can stay there and he takes Soe with him. They both go on a drive to a distant place to watch a sunset there. They both open their hearts to each other sitting there. Soe remembers a memory of that place when she came there with her family. At that time, her father was worried about the kids back at home, and her mom was mad at him because of his anxiousness for those kids while not giving proper time to his family. Meanwhile, Havok is worried about the future of Soe without him in it. But Soe asks him to focus on today rather than tomorrow. The following day, when Soe wakes up, she sees Havok, who is cooking breakfast for her. 
Meanwhile, Mr. Shin has come there to return the keys of the clinic of Soe. Habak invites him to the breakfast, which Shin accepts. At the table, Habak tells him that he made breakfast for Soe. Also, Soe and Habak live together, and Soe is very shy seeing him when he takes a warm bath naked. Habak tells him how he serves Soe, day and night. He wants to show the impression that he can do everything for Soe. But then Shin says to Soe that he is the new landlord of her building who has lowered the rent. At this, Soe thanks him a lot and gets very excited. As a counter-argument, Havok says he is the king of all the gods. Then, Shin reminds Soe that she has an agreement to work in his garden and pay the fees for the cancellation of their deal. But Havok also comes with her to Shin's garden and does the work of Soe. There, Shin tells Soe that he has heard a lot about Havok when he was young. He explains that Havok possesses all the powers that individual gods possess, except for the ability to revive the dead, and also a power that is only unique to Mr. Shin. But still, he is not intimidated by Shin. Despite their differences, Mr. Shin converses calmly with Havok, indicating that their grievances may be on the path to resolution. Then, Soe comes to give Havok water when he is working, but Havok spills the water pot all over his head, making a very romantic scene. Shin is standing behind them, watching their love for each other. At night, during the dinner, Havok and Soe talk about leaving Havok soon. It can be tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. But in front of Havok, Soe pretends to be strong and says that she can live the rest of her life with good memories of Havok. But when she is alone, she weeps a lot by thinking about him leaving her. In the morning, when Soe goes to wake Havok up, they decide to spend the rest of the days fully with each other so there will be no regrets after that. They both go to a sketch artist and make themselves a pencil sketch of theirs. Soe wears the bride's dress for the sketch. She looks so beautiful that Havok can't even turn his eyes away from her. They hang the sketch in their home on the wall. That night, Judon comes back and wants to ask Soe about where she was the night when her dad left their family. Before she can answer, Havok pulls him aside and asks about the matter. Jadong tells Havok that he has been searching for traces in the past when he was attacked. A man helped him that night reach the hospital, but he might get his tablet, which can render the divine wish of divine servants. Jadong thinks that it was Soe's father who took that tablet and maybe wished that he could reach his daughter, because at that time, he has heard about the death of his wife and is looking back for her daughter. Now, Havok knows that on that night, Soe was on the bridge and going to jump in the river. So they both go to the river, and suspect that Soe's father is still in there with his body intact because of the tablet with him. Havok jumps in to confirm their theory, which turns out to be true. Havok goes back and tells Soe that he has found her dad. Also, he tells her the story of that night when her father found a tablet from a god and wished to be with her daughter. Then, he landed on the bridge from which Soe was going to jump. So, he also jumped himself into the river and saved her from drowning, but he was strangled in water before her. Hearing this, Soe weeps a lot. She confirms that her father didn't know how to swim. She wants to go in the water to take him out, but Havok stops her from doing this. In the morning, Havok is with Soe, who is still struggling with the trauma of her father's death. Mura, Biriam, and Judong come to meet Havok. They want him to return to Divine Realm to ascend to the throne, but he doesn't want to go. He wants to use his only try to use his powers to extract Soe's father out of the river, but all the gods defy him from doing this. They warn him that by doing this, he will not be able to go back to the Divine Realm, and this way, he will perish. But Havok is still stubborn in his thoughts. He can't leave Soe like this without giving her anything, but doing this will also perish all his memories from everyone's mind, including Soe's. Soe hears this, and she becomes mad at Havok for even thinking of this. She doesn't want to forget his memories. She weeps a lot, but Havok comforts her by hugging her. After that, Havok and Soe are standing at the bank of the river. Soe wants to go in to get her father out, but it's too deep, and she can't reach out to such depth as a human. Havok or every other god can't get him out because of his last wish to meet with his daughter. So Havok kisses Soe and transfers his powers to her, allowing her to go inside without harm. He uses his only chance of using powers on her, allowing her to get her father out. Meanwhile, other gods also reach there. Mora cries out to stop him from doing this, but Judong asks Mora to let Havok do what he wants. So, Soe jumps in the water, and Havok jumps in with her. Soe goes deep inside the water and sees her father there, 
protected by the magic of the divine tablet. Though he is dead there, his body has been intact for many years deep in the sea due to that tablet. He still has that holy tablet in his pocket. So Wei takes her father and swims out. The next day, So Wei makes her father's memorial on a tree and promises him to shift the mother's memorial there as well. Habak is also with her. She tells Havoc that she has planned something for him to get things back to normal. She is considering getting her only wish from the Divine Tablet. To get Havoc back to his realm. Other gods also reach there and praise Soei for her intelligence. Meanwhile, the highest priest reaches there and tells Soei that she doesn't have to waste her wish on this, as it was according to the plan to save a human in the human world. That was the reason why sacred stones were hidden in the human world. Havoc found out the true meaning of being a god by saving a human and even giving out his powers for this cause. So, he has completed his mission. He can go back anyway now. So, Soei then has a wish to wish for anything in the world. But Soei wishes to let Havoc be with her for the rest of her life. When she dies, Havoc can go back to his realm. Everyone is amazed at her wish. Havoc is also happy with this wish. He hugs her and asks her to wait for him. He must go to the divine realm to make that wish come true. But he promises to return to her soon. So Havoc leaves for his world with the highest priest. After some days, we see Soei throwing a white flower into the river and imagining jumping into it. But Mora and Biriam reach there and say that Havoc will not come back as there has been no news from his side until now. Soei seems surprised to hear all this. At night, when she is returning home while talking to her friend Yomi, she reaches her street and sees that Havoc is standing there waiting for her. She becomes emotional and runs to hug him tightly. She asks why he took so long to return to her. So Havoc tells her that it took time to make her wish come true. So, Havoc will now live with Soei for the rest of Soei's life. He still couldn't get his powers along with him, but they were both very happy. The name of Havoc and Soei on the wall, written by a stone, comes as the nameplate of Havoc and Soei on the gate of their house. And with that, our story comes to an end.